Two key aspects of a professional learning community are reviewing essential standards and building common informative assessments. In this video, a third grade teacher team from Reagan Elementary uses old test questions to create a common assessment that meets the rigor of new Common Core state standards. Okay, so from our last meeting, we were talking about how our focus right now is on fractions in math. And I think maybe we should look at to see what we did last year and see how we can transition what we did last year to this year, but keeping in mind um, that we have to address Common Core standards. Um, the standards that we're addressing are looking at um, equivalent fractions and comparing fractions. We also need students to be able to um, identify the numerator, the denominator, as well as all the parts of a fraction. Um, so let's look at last year's test. Yeah, because last year I know we didn't have the numerator and denominator. Okay, so we need to add numerator and denominator for sure. Um, I know that last year, when they compare fractions, they only looked at pictures. pictures, so we need to make sure there's numbers when we're comparing fractions. There wasn't any open-ended questions on last year's test yeah, either. Yeah, and that's huge of Common Core. We need to really make sure that students are given the opportunity to demonstrate knowledge by writing their thoughts down. Right. So yeah. maybe we should just transition to possibly looking at some of those. Performance tests? Yeah. So if we look at part one, it's called mm -hmm. the school garden. Um, the four third grade classes at Jefferson Elementary School are planning a garden. Use the garden space below. Show how each class can have an equal <coughs> section of the garden. And then that has four questions that go with it. And the students have to draw the picture and then write the fraction of the garden that each class plants. Let's see, where would that fall under? Um, that would fall under the 3NF1. So we could definitely okay. use that part. So seven is still part of part two. Mm -hmm. So then yeah. on Wednesday, Class C planted tulips <coughs> in their section of the garden. So they're adding one more, one more. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe so before we get to that, though, maybe to help address like the NF.3, the equivalent fraction, maybe we should ask them if two forces is equivalent to what fraction. But, but not saying that, to say Class okay. A and B together also makes... Maybe what's another way we what's yeah what's that? another way we could write that fraction okay. so that way we could so should we divide six into part A and part B yeah we yes okay so, so A write would the, be the write the fraction A is write the fraction yeah and then B would be the equivalency um, should we write anything with the pictures of labeling do we want I would make are we gonna put bigger. that points like for label it like how you know they I mean? label it. Like how they label it. Like, is their picture going to be worth point when we grade it? Yeah, yeah, I think that just as long as they try to partition it into equal sections, it should be fine. Just because they could do it in rectangular stripes, they could draw it like as a cross. They could do an X symbol. Let's look at a root. Like there's yeah, you're right. Different ways they could do it. And then here's you know. a student work sample. <clears throat> so like. The There's an, another one. Oh, I have the same copy. Just the kidding. Copy. <laughs> See, this is. See, like they could partition it several ways. Yeah. Like all of this. I think we leave it up to them, and then that way. Whatever makes the most sense. That way, okay. it's a little bit. So as more long as they, we'll just thought. give them points as, as long as they showed work. As long and as it's four, four yeah. sections. Four yes. Be as equal part. Yeah. I think that would be sufficient. But this is interesting because look at how they drew their own mm -hmm. inside the box. Yeah. Where like we think of it this As way. As in utilizing mm -hmm. the figure the that's given. Thing. But they still partitioned it correctly <coughs> so they would still earn points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then down here. See like right here they wrote it as the equivalent but I think if we don't ask them they won't do it. I agree. Okay. Seven class C planted tulips in their section. How much of the gardens left for planting now? Um, I don't know if that's necessary to do because that's subtracting subtraction. Yeah. and that doesn't really address the standards that we're looking at as our essential okay. outcome so maybe just get rid of that okay I think um, something that will help us a little bit is like how they scored it like giving it points like a level of one well we'll change our scores because we'll do a five-point rubric yeah mm -hmm. just to keep with our grading scale and if we assign points for certain levels like if they scored a certain amount of points, it's a five, yeah. or four, or three, two, one. We just have to make sure we decide the breakout points for each section. When they do, like the DPA, they get two separate grades. So they get the multiple mm -hmm. choice grade, and then we grade the performance task separately. So, so we, we should just do that then, mm -hmm. if we want to have a... Keep it keep similar. It mm -hmm. 
and that way we can see maybe kids do well in the multiple choice portion and we could flex on that yeah. mm -hmm. and if they struggle with the performance task then we can see what sections they're struggling with is it the writing is it the justification do they not understand the questions and that way it'll be a little bit easier for us to determine where they're at ability wise we have some fairly simple ones like this just stating whether or not they're equivalent yeah okay. and then I like this one because they have to actually look at the two figures and mm -hmm. then they have to write down the fractions for each for so sure. Yeah, so they're actually going to have to address both standards. Mm -hmm. Like they have to know the numerator and denominator, how to represent it, and then and to then understand that they're equivalent. Equal. I right. like that. That's a harder question. That's yes. combining it. So we'll start yeah. with the easy. Well, maybe we'll have like one of this mm -hmm. or two of these, mm -hmm. and then like two of the these for sure. There's ten questions for the multiple choice portion. So we'll have this. We'll work on this during prep, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we'll bring it for the next meeting, and then just to make sure there's no errors and make sure that we address all the standards that we've set out to address.